So come on, let's go for a ride. I want to welcome and thank my Green Hornet fans and supporters uh, of the website, um, www.blackbeauty.com, and um, I'll welcome you to a ride in the Black Beauty. The car rides very well, very smooth, which should be expected for a luxury car of its era. Occasionally get some stares from some passerbys as you drive by. Some people recognize the car, others just recognize it as a, a very interesting custom vehicle. Some people have no clue what it is. Of course, this car was built by Dean Jeffries. There's always been some confusion um, surrounding uh, the builder of the car, and some people have taken credit for it. But Dean Jeffries is the builder, and he's been super helpful with uh, any of the restoration involved with the car. Questions, I can just give him a call, and he's always been there with giving time to fans and, and answering questions. Dean's really a master craftsman. He's been able to build this car, and of course its sister car, which resides in the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles, part of the Robert Peterson collection. Uh, sometimes there's been some confusion over who, who built the cars, but suffice it to say, Dean was the builder of both of those two cars that were used on the TV show. I'm a little closer to the steering wheel than I would like to be. It rides very close. The, the front seat is actually fixed in a position that allows maximum uh, room in the back for a passenger. And it's also a tight fit because Bruce Lee wasn't very tall and um, it made it so that uh, it was closer for him to uh, work all the controls and gadgets. But for a person of my stature, um, it's a pretty tight fit. Up front you've got ease and accessibility of all the gauges. Uh, you have your uh, uh, radio uh, speaker gauge here and the two buttons that go with it. This of course is the front TV screen that they placed. We have the green visor here which Cato used to pull down and drive with. This allowed him to use the green headlights and supposedly in an infra-green, much similar to what we have like night vision today or infrared, um, he had the ability to drive unseen. Never mind the custom car shop, Cato. Claudia Bromley's been kidnapped. Right behind me you have the divider glass that separates the uh, front passenger compartment from the rear passenger compartment. And right here we have Cato's phone. Cato also had access to his telephone, which he could communicate with the Green Hornet in the back seat with, via the phone or just by talking. He also had the ability to call anyone in the outside world. This was early cell phone technology, actually radio controlled. And back in 1966, you had to really be somebody to have a phone in your car. The Black Beauty has two phones, one in the front, one in the rear. His phone was a radio frequency type of control in 1966, and that was a pretty big deal. He could call the office, call Casey, call Scanlon, or call Mike. We covered the only possible exits for the arsonist, Frank. We haven't seen a single person. Of course, moving from the front where Cato sat, you move to the back where the Green Hornet's office was. The Green Hornet's character was Britt Reed, who was played by Van Williams. In the back, he has all of his ability to control the functions of the car. Things like rockets, um, tire track sweeps, the use of the scanner. Uh, even the front rams that held the car in place in the 
Green Hornet's garage. Blaze like armor plate. Activate the Hornet mortar. Trump, I want to do business, but not with the Green Hornet. He'll move us both out. But I've got a way to get around that. The Green Hornet had access to control all of the functions through several panels back there. He also had the ability to look um, at an oscilloscope, which was uh, to detect the radio frequencies, which he usually monitored police bands, marine bands, air force, uh, military bands as well. He also had a TV screen in the back, which he could uh, have the transmission of the scanner, which popped out of the trunk, to fly around and record where the um, evildoers were committing their crimes. It would transfer its video signal back to the TV screen, and they could monitor from there. Activate the scanner generator. Activate it. Coordinates, 2, 47, and 19. Let's go. Out of the back window provides a unique perspective for both Cato and the Green Hornet. Looking at the, out the back from the driver's perspective is pretty difficult. You have that small limo-like window back there, plus your two side gun ports that the Green Hornet could shoot out of if he needed to with the sting or send gas out with his gas gun. In restoring a car like this, it uh, takes a lot of effort, uh, more so than it would be to restore, say, a Mustang or a Camaro from the muscle car era. You have to source out a lot of parts, things that were vintage from the era. The process of the restoration took about five years on this car. A lot of time was put into getting the body very straight and the nice gleaming paint job. But a lot of effort also was put into sourcing out all of the correct components that were stolen or missing uh, from souvenir collectors over the years. But for the most part, this car was complete. Everything just as it was on the TV show. Um, a lot of time was put into wiring of the car. Wiring uh, accounted for almost a year's worth of the work. It takes a lot of testing to run the wires, uh, make sure that uh, the circuits are right, uh, that everything functions properly, and to make sure it functioned like it did on television. He didn't have that ability back in 1966. He had to get two cars done 
in roughly a four weeks. He took a little more time with his car, but provided two cars with bodywork, uh, electrical uh, components, and all the working gadgets in about three or four weeks. That's the original TV used scanner. That's an original prop. It was in fairly poor shape when I got it, found it in the trunk of the car, and I had to take it apart and clean it back up and repaint it, restore it essentially. It had some broken parts, but it came together pretty well. Check the scanner, Kato. Stick to the back streets, Cato. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, ride and intimate look inside of the Black Beauty number no. two here from the Green Hornet TV series of 1966. Uh, I want to thank all my supporters and fans, the people of the websites uh, who have visited my website, and various other sister forums that have been supportive. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed your look at this car, and I want to thank you all for dropping by. <laughs>